Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Louisiana, Georgia. Quick, am I reading off the list of the most religious states or the list with the highest per capita incidence of COVID-19? Trick question, same fucking list. I mean, you know, look, there are a few states like Florida and Nevada that keep the top 10 from being exactly the same 10 states. But with the exception of West Virginia, all the top 10 most religious states are in the bottom 15 in dealing with this pandemic at the time of this recording. That is not a coincidence. I mean, I'm sorry to spend another diatribe saying I told you so because people don't generally like hearing that, but for fuck's sake, I've been screaming myself hoarse about this shit for most of a decade. And even within the atheist community, people told me, hey, tone it down. They said, my goodness, Noah, you're acting like it's a matter of life and death. Well, now do you see it? I mean, I mean, it's not like it just became a matter of life and death over the last couple of months or even since Trump took office, right? It, it, it's just that this pandemic is the first thing that made it a matter of life and death for them, for me, for everybody, regardless of the color of their skin, who they love, and whether they have the gender that somebody who never met them thinks they should have. It, it, it's been a matter of life and death for everybody else for a long fucking time, right? I, here's the biggest problem. Against all evidence... People kept pretending that the Nutters were some extreme amongst Christianity. I would talk about the creationists and the homophobes and the end is nigh wackaloons. And people would say, yes, yes, there are voices on the extreme in every group, but the majority of Christians aren't like that. But this idea of moderate majority in Christianity was never anything more than a comforting fucking fantasy as wanting for evidence as the religion itself. I mean, if the majority of Christians are moderates, why don't the moderates have TV networks or radio stations? The nutballs have theme parks with hundred million dollar attractions. What's the moderate equivalent of that? To believe the lunatics aren't running the asylum, you have to ignore an entire nation's worth of evidence. And yet, people seemed perfectly willing to do so right up until the lunatics sent one of their own to the Oval Office. Look, it's not hard to see how this happens. As recently as 1990, 85% of Americans identified as Christian. Today, that number is around 65%. And sure, some amount of it is, you know, Christians dying and being replaced by non-Christians, but a ton of it is also people just not using that word anymore, right? I mean, it used to be the kind of like the, the default American setting when it came to religion. If you weren't raised Jewish or Muslim or Hindu or something, and you didn't really go to church or have specific religious beliefs, you probably just use the word Christian when somebody asked you your religion. And, and then the internet happened, right? People started to learn stuff. Information about religion was widely available, even in small towns where the libraries and bookstores were careful about censoring anything that wasn't sufficiently Christian. People learned more about their beliefs. They heard the arguments from the other side unadulterated, and they left Christianity in droves. And the people who left were, by and large, the moderates. Right? I mean, that's not universally true. I mean, we all know atheists that came from fundamentalist backgrounds and were all the way devout. But most of the people who left Christianity did so by just not using that term anymore. They never were churchgoers or Bible readers. So all they had to do to make the change was offer up a different answer if Pew Research ever called them up. And of course, this whittling down left Christianity ever more in the hands of the zealots. There were fewer and fewer people to moderate the most extreme impulses and the profit motive shifted more and more to these bigots, right? Christianity followed suit, rebranded itself as a haven for bigots, conspiracy theorists, and lunatics. And along the way, they became the mainstream, even as we continued to call them extremists. Rejecting science became the norm, and we pretended the moderates were still in control. Religious freedom started including denying LGBTQ people their rights, and we twiddled our fucking thumbs. We'll have to agree to disagree became the rebuttal to math. And we still acted like the democracy wasn't on fire. And now our unwillingness to look this problem in the eye is killing us, and we're still not looking it in the eye. <laughs> 